This is uh, Nelly Deutsch. Today I'm going to show you how to manage your Moodle 3.1 very basic Moodle site. First thing I'm going to do is log in once I have my admin details. Write admin, log in. Notice what you see here. It says my. I'm going to change that because I don't like the my there. But um, that's my dashboard. And you can also figure that. So let's take a look at what's here. First of all, you can see that I'm in the dashboard. And I can customize my dashboard and the whole page. First thing I'd like to do is go into Site Administration because I'd like to see the blocks. And right now, there are no blocks on the page. So I'm going to use the search box right there at the bottom and write down blocks. Click on search and wait a few seconds until that comes up. Here we are. Now, notice what it says here. It says blocks on. Right now, the blocks are off. Let's go into manage blocks so I can have the blocks on each of my pages. Blocks on at the top right. Now these are the features available in my blocks. You can see a whole list of them. They're also plugins. And here is add block at the bottom. And these are the blocks available. Same as here, except for YouTube, which has been disabled or hidden. I can unhide it and then it'll appear in my block menu. So if I go down to the block, I'll be able to now see YouTube as well. Some of these blocks you need to uh, set and some you don't. Here's another one that is uh, disabled. I can enable it. So just go through and uh, see what's been disabled by default and you can enable it. And then you can go into settings and set things up. You can also uninstall. Uh, here you need an API, so you'll go into Google API and get that set up. But before we do any of the uh, little things, let's go back into the dashboard. And we've got our block here, so we're ready to go. And now we can edit. We couldn't do any of these things before that. Now we can. So let's go into configure the navigation block. Allow the user to dock. Why not? Display categories. That's up to you. And then generate navigation for the following. Everything or just categories and courses. It's up to you to choose how you want it. Now where this block appears, any page or dashboard page. If it's uh, any page, you can decide on the specific page. And then where you want it and the weight. If you want it first, middle or last. On this page, you can decide whether you want to have it or disable it. And then you save. In this case, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, instead of any page, just dashboard page, and then save. Right, next. I can go into administration. I would leave administration. I wouldn't touch that. But I can go into private files and decide where I want them. You could also move things around, left, right, and so on. Online users, you can disable it or have it. Badges, the calendar, and so on. So it's up to you how you uh, manage your dashboard. Next I'm going to show you how to dock. There's 
the dock feature. You can see now it's on the left. If you click on it, you'll be able to bring it back. So that's the docking feature that everyone has if you enabled it. In this case, I did. So we can dock everything. Everything can be docked so that you've got the bare minimum. Okay, which is only your add a block. We can bring everything back, as I said, or we can simply hide it. So uh, let's bring it back. Administration, we want to bring back users and so on. So these are actually blocks that we've docked. Next, what else can we do here? As I said, we can also minimize things. So if you minimize, you don't get all the information. So that's maximize. This is minimize. That's another thing you can do. But if the page is all clogged up with lots of blocks, it sometimes looks better and um, is easier to manage if you dock things. And then we can add various blocks, of course, like the courses. And notice what happens because we don't have a course yet. So there is the course block. It says no courses in this category. We can add a new course. Let's do that now. By giving it a full name, we'll call it test, short name, you always have to have, and then notice we don't have categories yet, so we will add categories, so we can add it to a category, show the course, or hide it, starting date, they can enroll in the course regardless of the starting date, that's up to you, course format, there aren't that many, you can add more, Number of sections, that's up to you, and how you, the appearances, the languages, do you want to force it, English. Notice we don't have any other language right now. And then we can save and display. We don't have restrictions either, so if you want to add restrictions, we would have to add completion tracking. So this is what the course looks like uh, with a theme of topics. I'm going to go to the administration and open it up so I can see the course administration, everything that it has to offer. I'm going to go back into edit settings and scroll down to completion tracking. I'm going to edit yes and then save and display. Now notice what happens when I add, let me go back here, when I add the uh, completion, course completion tracking. Here uh, is the criteria. Course is complete when all conditions are met. Or you can have courses complete when any of the conditions are met. And uh, these are the various things. Activity completion. There aren't any activities yet. Completion of other courses, completion by date, you can enable this. Enrollment duration, unenrollment, course grade, manual self completion, and manual completion by others. And you can see who has these rights and you can save. Let's go uh, into back into the course called test. And see what's available here. You can also add blocks that are not available. 
But what I want to add are restrictions and show you how that works. So I'm going to go into announcements. That's here by default. This is just a news announcement, general one. And I'm going to go into edit settings. Scroll down and go into restrict. The restrict will only appear once you have the activity completion along with it. And then you can uh, restrict and uh, indicate completion. The restriction, I'm going to uh, leave it for now, but it could be by date, grade, user profile, and other restrictions. The uh, completion tracking, you can always get explanations here by going into the question mark, it explains it. Um, can, students can manually mark, or you can show as complete when conditions are met. In this case, I want students to view this activity to complete it. I can add tags. And I'm going to add news competencies. I'm not going to add anything, but you can see that there's a lot here. And then save and return. Now I've got an activity that is required. Notice here the system marks the item complete according to conditions. Otherwise, let me show you how that's done. I'm going to go back into Edit Settings and I'm going to change the conditions, Activity Completion. This time I can do it because no one has responded yet by clicking on Unlock and then scroll down back to the activity conditions and this time I'm going to do it I can either do it do not indicate but I'm going to do it students can manually mark it and notice what happens now next to the announcements you'll see a box a solid box and it says if I hover my mouse students can manually mark this item is complete so the system doesn't need to do it. They're not required to do anything. They can mark it if they wish. Let's go back now and edit settings. This time we're going to remove it and show you what happens. So let's go into activity completion. This time it's not required. This option is available everywhere, even for labels, any activity or resource on the Moodle. So notice there's nothing there right now. And that's it. That's the beginning. We will continue, so stay tuned. If you have any questions, feel free to ask as we go. Thank you.